Now, see, earned value management is a very, very uh, useful tool to track the progress of the project in terms of time and cost. Now, often people are scared uh, of the formulas associated with the earned value management. Right? Um, but again, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a basic concept. You don't need to cram formulas. Right? First of all, let's try and understand what you mean by earned value. What is the earned value? Now, earned value means the value earned. Right? For example, let's take a very, very simple project. The, the project is fencing a square park. Right? We have to fence a square park. Let's assume that it takes one day to fence one side of a square park. Right? And in terms of cost, it takes 1000 USD to cost to uh, fence one side of a square park. The plan is there in front of you right now. Right? This is a square park. We have to fence the square park. Each side will take a day. Right? That means four sides will take how many days? Four days. And since each side will cost 1000, the four sides will cost 4000 USD. Now, the total value of the project is what? 4000 USD. Right? Now, value of each side will be how much? 1000. Right? If I say I have completed 25% of the work, what does it mean? I have, I have done one side of the project. One side boils down to how many in terms of dollars? 1000 USD. So it means I have done 1000. My earned value is 1000. Now a very very important thing. Earned value is always set against budget, not against pricing. Obviously when you, you will do this project for a customer, over budget you will charge a price also. Over, yeah. over a budget, you will, you will have some profit margins, then pricing will be equal to budget plus profit margins. Right? Now, earned value is set against budget, not against pricing. We are not measuring a, we are not measuring or tracking profits using earned value. We are trying to track progress against the, the budget just to ensure that we remain within budget and if, if you are going over budget, you can take immediate corrective actions. Why? It is important because if our actual cost overshoot the budget, it can have adverse impact on the profitability. Right? So let's take a, now again let's go back to the same example. There is a square park to be fenced. Right? Each side will take how many days? One day. Right? As you see in front of you right now. Right? So there are four sites that, that will take four days to complete, right? And how many, in uh, how many, uh, uh, what is the cost incurred to complete this four site? Four thousand USD. Each site will take thousand USD in terms of cost. <coughs> now let's assume that you are tracking the status of the project at the end of second day, right? Now listen carefully. At the end of second day. As per the plan, how many sites should have been completed? Two. Two, two. two right? Yes. Now, this two means whatever should have been completed as per the plan is planned value. Right? So, two sites, planned value. What is the worth of two sites? Two in terms of dollars? Two thousand USD. So, can I say, I can say planned value as two sites or two thousand USD. Right? Now let's say you know I am tracking the status at the end of second day. When I actually visited the site, when I actually visited the site, I saw only one site complete. Which means how I have done only one site. Right? What is the value of one site? Thousand USD. So my actual percentage complete or actual value of work done is called as earned value. So my earned value is one side or 1000 USD. Now based on this data, I planned for two days, but I have actually accomplished only one day of work. Am I ahead or lagging behind the plan? Lagging I am lagging behind the plan. Right? Now when I compare, right, when I compare my actual accomplishment with respect to the plan, 
I get schedule variance, right? I get schedule variance, and the formula of schedule variance is earn value, right? Value accomplished minus planned value, what I should have accomplished. If this value is equal to zero, what does it mean? I am on schedule. If it is greater than zero, it means ahead of schedule. If it is less than zero, it means I am behind the schedule. Does it make sense for everyone? Yes. Now, let's talk about performance of the product in terms of cost. Right? Now, let's assume that I am tracking the cost of the product at the end of second day. Now, what is the value accomplished? 1000 USD because I have done only 1000. One side. Now, let's assume, let's assume that in accomplishing this, this one side, Right, which is 1000 USD, I have spent 800 USD. Now, from where will I get this 800 USD worth? Sorry, cost? I will go to my ERP and check how much cost is actually incurred. Right, or if I have a manual system, I will go to the account guy and ask him how much is the money spent so far. If the actual money spent, let's say, is 800, let's assume it's 800. So, this means I am, in terms of cost, I am on track. I am with it, budget, right? Because I have, what is the value of work done? The value of work done is 1000 USD. But I have to accomplish that value of work, I have spent simply 800. However, if let's say, you know, I, went, I go to my accounts guy, or I check my accounting system, and I found that actual cost is 2000. Well, what does it mean? Am I overspending or not? Yes. Right? I have accomplished only 1000 USD of work, but I have spent how much? 2000 USD. Right? This shows I am over budget. <coughs> now, I have another parameter called as cost variance to track right, the cost performance of the project. It, com it compares the value accomplished with, a, with respect to the cost incurred. Value accomplished will be earned value, right? So cost variance is equal to earned value minus the actual cost. Now in this case, if I have done 1000 USD of work but spent 2000 USD, right? My cost variance will be negative. A negative cost variance indicate that I am over budget. I have to take, I have to take immediate correction. I have to manage my cost aggressively. Does it make sense or not? If cost variance is equal to zero, I am on budget. If cost variance is greater than zero, I am under budget, within budget. If cost variance is less than zero, I am over budget. Now, if you see this whole thing, you know, you don't need to cram any kind of formulas. Right? They're simple, basic. It's, it's very, very simple, basic understanding. Now, you, even if you see the formulas, Whatever you are comparing, cost or schedule performance, it is always compared against earned value, right? If you have, if you compare what you should have accomplished against earned value, what did you get? Schedule variance, right? If you compare actual cost incurred against earned value, you get cost variance, right? Right? In all of these formulas, EV will come first. Now, apart from variances, we have got another parameters, which are indexes. Cost performance index and schedule performance index. Now, see, some of you might ask a question. If by, if by, by knowing cost variance and schedule variance, we will come to know about the cost and schedule performance of our project, why do we require indexes? Right? This variance is both schedule and cost variance will not help me in forecasting. Now, if imagine if in these formulas I replace minus sign with a divide sign. If I replace minus sign with a divide sign, they can help me in forecasting as well. Let's see how. Now, if I replace 
minus sign will divide sign. What will it, we get in terms of SPI here? On the, the schedule performance index is earned value by planned value. The earned value is 1000 and the planned value was 2000. Right? So SPI is equal to what? 1000 by divided by 2000. So SPI is 0.5. Or I can say SPI is equal to 1 by 2. What does this SPI indicate? Can I forecast based on this? This also indicate that to accomplish one day of work, I take how many days? Two days. So to accomplish four days of work, how much I will take? Eight days. Right? So you know, when I forecast, I, have, I can take immediate corrective action. Similarly, I can forecast about the cost. The cost performance index was what? Earn value by actual cost. Again, 1000 by 2000, which is equal to 0.5. What does it mean? Again, to, to do $1 value of work, how much do I am spending currently? $2. So if I have to do 4000 USD of work, how much I will spend? 8000. Right? So these are SPI and CPI. Now when you talk about the, the value of these parameters, if SPI is equal to 1, it means I am on schedule. If SPI is greater than 1, it means I am ahead. Right? Because earn value is on the top, is on the numerator. SPI greater than 1 means I am ahead. SPI less than 1 means I am behind. Similarly, when you talk about cost parameters, CPI is equal to 1 means on budget. CPI greater than means within or under budget and CPI less than 1 means over budget. Right? Now this is a regular exercise that you have to do in your project. Now uh, most of the parameters are calculated in MS project automatically but you should do basic fundamentals so that you know you should understand how MS project does it. Now few in basics. Let's, let's talk about few basics. What will be the earned value at the completion of project? Yes, 4,000. Now, the, this, uh, this is also called as budget at completion. So the earned value at completion of the project will always be equal to budget at completion, which is BAC, 4,000 USD in this case. Another important thing, let's say you are tracking the status of the project, right? If CPI, let's say, is greater than 1, which means you are within budget, but SPI is less than 1, you are behind the schedule. What is the corrective action? CPI is greater than 1, SPI is less than 1. What is the corrective action? Crash. Can, yes, crashing is one of the corrective action. Right? Because since you have cost bandwidth available, you can crash appropriately. Right? Now, if let's say you are in a situation where you are good in terms of schedule, your SPI is greater than 1. Right? and your CPI is less than 1, then what is the solution? Manage cost aggressively. Sometimes it calls for pyramid correction. Now what do you mean by pyramid correction? See, at times it happens, you take all the good resources for your project. When you take all the good resources for your project, what happens? It start performing good in terms of time, quality, but bad in terms of cost. In a project, you should have a right mix of high skilled resources, medium skill and low skill resources. So, manage cost aggressively and correct your pyramid if you are doing bad in terms of cost. Now, another question. CPI, I am taking CPI, the same thing will hold good for SPI also. CPI is equal to 1.1, good or bad? CPI is equal to 1.2, good or bad? CPI is equal to 1.6. Too good or flawed estimates? CPI is equal to 1.6. Is it too good or flawed estimates? CPI is equal to 1.6. Will you say it's too good or flawed estimates? See, if I'm, if you are getting a CPI of 1.6, doesn't it mean that you don't know your own capabilities? How can you be 60% better than one? Better than what you judge yourself? If Let's say SPI is equal to 1.6. Can you be 60% better than what you thought of yourself? If you are, if you are doing these kind of estimates, what does it indicate? 
fraud estimates. Your estimates are wrong, right? So do you know? Don't be so excited if you're getting two good values for CPI and SPI. It might be because your estimates are wrong, wrong. right? Yes. See, I think you know a good value of a CPI or SPI can range from let's say 0.95 to 1.2, right? Though officially they say it should be greater than equal to one, in a practical environment, if you're getting a value of from 0.95 to let's say 1.2, it's, it's a good performance. Right? Does it make sense or not? Right. 